What's the first thing you would do in this rose bed? Weed. Nope. Weed. 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 That's what I would do. Weed. That's the first thing you do. Well, we're assuming you've just done that. Second. Weed. <laughs> then we are going to unhill. Does anybody remember the uh, process for unhilling? We talked about it when we were hilling up the roses. You take the third away. You unhill. <laughs> I know, it was a long time ago. Uh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> you know. In the thorns. <laughs> so, in theory, then, to give you your diploma, all we need to do is to teach the last two weeks of the second year, mm -hmm. since you don't remember anything from the previous <laughs> Sounds great. time. I think you leave some of it here. Maybe. You leave some of what here? The... Your learning? No. <laughs> <laughs> the manure. <laughs> which... I'm sure you do, Ian, but I would like you to give me the answer. I was trying to give you Okay, last fall we put the manure here. Why did we put the manure here? Insulation. Insulation because we did what? Get out. To protect the graft union. <laughs> because we did what? We scraped the soil away from some of the roots, right, to create the hills. So we're, we're going to reverse the process. We are going to remove the soil and spread it over the manure. Why, why do we manure roses? Roses are very, very heavy feeders. They have a very heavy ha appetite. And if you remember again, back to last fall, what is the ideal soil for growing roses? Well drained. Well drained, but what else? Alkaline. Sorry? Alkaline. Uh, no, it's actually slightly acidic. Very heavy soil. Because heavy soil has a higher watt. And lighter soil. CC, yeah. So these are growing on light soil, which is not ideal because it's tennis court and it was top soil that was brought in. But it was the last sunny spot that we had in the garden. So what you're going to do is we are going to weed them thoroughly. We've got a lot of speed well growing in this garden, which is a pretty uh, invasive weed, which will actually lights likes light soil. And you can see it's actually going to flower right about now and create more problems. But you're going to unhill. Now Lucas has made this, uh, a bunch more of the sticks that we used last year when we, we were hilling them. We have short pieces of snow fence stake with a point on them that will help you get in and remove the soil hill. You've got to remove the soil and we've got to be, you've got to be very careful because the roses are several weeks ahead of where we were last year. Last year when we were doing this there was snow on the turf last spring when we were doing this this very process. So we're several weeks ahead and because of that the leaves have almost fully emerged on a lot of the buds. Um, so it's going to be a little more challenging in seeing what you're doing but additionally we've got lo a lot less dieback. Last year some of the roses we had to cut down to one single stem. Now hybrid tea roses are very very vigorous so they we knew that they would for the most part rejuvenate and they've all rejuvenated. This year it's, they're, they're a lot healthier. We've got a lot more choice on canes, a lot more choice on buds, etc., etc. So we're going to unhill them. You've got to make sure that you get right down to the graft union. And you're spreading the soil around. So there shouldn't be a lot of soil right around the center of the plant. Once you've got your plant unhilled, You'll be able to see a form. Anybody rem remember the rules for pruning hybrid tea roses as opposed to grand floors and multi floors and floor abundance? Uh, take out the middle. And keep. With a hybrid tea rose, you want an open center ideally, or vase shaped, right? With the branches going up. Hybrid tea roses are three to five buds, three to five canes. Multi floors, grand floors, and floor abundance are five to seven canes, five to seven buds. Okay, hold slowly. Three to five, five to seven. And the reason is that hybrid teas are much more vigorous than multi floors, grand floors, and floor abundance. Right? We have no floor abundance in this in these two panel beds. They are all hybrid tea roses. So when we look at this and we say we're gonna be left with three to five canes, three to five buds. There is uh, a lot to remove. 
A cane is a bud? No, a cane is a stem. It's three to five Back canes to three with three, three to five three to buds, five buds on, on each cane. All right. Okay. Three to five buds, three to five canes. Now, the canes, ideally, are what thickness? Pencils. Pencil thickness. So if I look at this cane right here, that is an ideal cane. That's pretty good for an ideal cane. Another one there, but that one could be a problem because it's in the center. That one there could be a good cane. That's not a good cane. That one's a little bit thick. Right? Three to five buds, three to five canes. So the first thing you do is weed. Un oh, unhill. Unhill. <laughs> but pruning, 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 pruning. What's the first thing you do? Stand back and dead. look at it. No way you're dead. pruning. Dead. Remove the dead stuff. No way you're pruning. Well, we know that. We, we know we're pruning hybrid tea roses. That was 10 minutes ago. <laughs> okay, so you're going to remove the dead if there's any dead canes. You're not going to worry about snipping off the tops of the dead. That's win or die back. But those canes are still fairly fairly healthy. So if there's any dead, completely dead branches, you're going to remove them. And could we be taking this redo? Yeah. That, well, it's pretty close. This one here beside it. Okay. So you get rid of that, and that will uh, help you get a better picture. Kind of then have an idea of what canes you're going to keep. And ideally, you want the canes around the outside of the plant. All right, so you're going to have three to five canes. You don't, you don't have to have exactly that, that's a shot, right? Then you're going to, once you've removed the canes and you're removing them right down to the crown of the plant, that's why it's critical when you want hill that you get right down to the crown because you don't want to leave a stub, right? Remember, stubs are illegal. And what happens with a stub is it will produce a bud and then you've got a confusing plant. And with hybrid tea roses especially, Although these are selected for disease resistance, they are very, very prone to black spot and powdery mildew. And because of the pesticide ban, it means we can no longer spray. Uh, we were down at the Niagara Parks uh, Botanical Gardens last Thursday, and they were quite facing huge challenges in their rose garden, which is one of the main features of that institution, uh, because they can no longer spray. So they're looking at replacing a lot of their roses with more resistant cultivars. So one of the ways that we can reduce disease incidence is to prune them properly, so that open shape. So it's imperative that you remove the canes right down to the crown. Then you're going to look for three to five buds. Now, in, so, in, in some cases here, we don't have buds anymore. We have leaves because the buds are broke. So, and again, it's an approximation. It's like wisteria pruning. You don't necessarily have to count four buds on every tip. If Lucas was counting four buds on every tip on the wisteria here, he'd be still up there pruning wisteria today. Right? You know four buds, once you've done one or two, is about that long, or thereabouts, so that's where you would go. It is critical, however, that the last bud be where? Facing out. Facing out, yeah. So I wouldn't, if I was selecting this cane, which is not a great cane, but I wouldn't prune it right above this bud because this this shoot is going to grow in here so it's going to grow into the center of the plant I would ideally if I if I was going to use this cane I would want to take this bud here so that it's growing out and that is probably bud number one two three four five six somewhere there this could be a bud down here if, I, if I've got rid of this shoot I might want to take that bud Right, so it's going to grow up there. So it's going to force the stems to grow in the direction that I require. So when you look at these roses, they're going to be reduced to that much. So it's quite shocking. And when you look at the, the one on the end there with the number of canes, a lot less canes. Okay. Now, any questions? You have to be very careful when you're working here because these buds snap off very easily. So you need to do it with some degree of delicacy. We are going to have a trailer out here, aren't we, Lucas, for the, the debris, for this debris. We are sorting, are we putting all the weeds in? 
Uh, we'll keep them separate. We're we'll going to keep the weeds separate because the rose stems are going to the burn pile. Why? No, not to spread the black spot. Black spot, powdery mildew, and stem cankers. Right. So we're putting the uh, branches and taking them out to the burn pile. Yeah, they're, they're, you're fairly good here. Because these roses, as I said, initially were selected. Because when I planted this rose garden, I don't know how many years ago, I did. I, I don't like hybrid key roses because I don't like the maintenance in them. I don't like the fact that you have to hill them and unhill them. And I don't like the fact that you have to prune them. So we selected varieties that we didn't have to spray. Or spray them, I should say. So we've minimized. Your seconders should be clean. Like. You don't need to disinfect your seconders between pruning. Because the roses are relatively clean. So, yeah. And there's no leaf litter. Primarily black spot is going to come from the leaves. And the, the leaf litter has been cleaned up. We did that last fall when we did that shearing. So, once you've done that, as I said, you're going to be evaluated on, on your plant. We'll give you each an evaluation sheet. Um, you'll evaluate it, then we'll just...